Hi, welcome to the Intro Stats Lecture Series. This is the second video for the exam number two review. So uh, we did uh, uh, 15 problems in our first video. So we're going to do another 15 at our second video. So let's go ahead and go to our uh, worksheets here. Okay. So the number 16 here, it says for data set, say stack exams. And uh, so the three variables, we have three variables, the sex, GPA, and uh, class. If we want to do a dot plot of the female freshman and uh, for the GPAs here, so what will be the filter we use? So the answers here will be D. So in the R's here, like when we say the filter, right? We say sex equal to female. So remember the R, they need to use like a two equal sign, all right? Okay, now is number 17 is here. Number 17, they say in the 1980, it was generally believed that the conjectural ergonomity affect 7.5% of the large national children. Some people believe that the increase in the number of the chemical in the environment has led to an increase in the instance of an abnormality. A recent study exam, 420 randomly selected children and find 34 of them show the abnormality. It's have the strong, you know, the information. What is the test statistic, right? Okay, so does it have a strong, you know, the, what the, the risk is increased, you know, what is the test statistic? Okay, so let's go ahead and go to my, um, go to the, my calculator, here we go. All right, so the, this one's here is we do in the proportions, right? So you will say the second, oh, so we do stat, then we do test, and then we do what? This is one sample proportion Z test, right? So P0 is what is 0 0.075. And what is the X here? X here is 34. And uh, X here is 34. And the ends here is what? 400, what? 20s, right? 420. And we are looking for the is more abnormalities, right? So that means we do greater than ZP0. Okay, so all right, so we got the greater than P0. So the we find that the test statistics is what value? 4631. 4631. Okay, so let's go back to the my. Okay, so we find that this is a four six three one. So it's D. All right. So number eighteen, the Center of Disease Control report a survey of randomly selected American age 55, 65 and older. Find out the five sixty of the. 1,024 men and the 535 of the 10,000 women suffer from some form of the arthritis. Does this suggest that arthritis is more affecting men than women? Okay, so the, let's try to test the significance of alpha equal to the point the five here. What is the critical value for the significance level? All right, so because this is the mass, right? So your non hypothesis here, and your, so you want to find the probability of the man, right? You say that does the suggest likely affected men more than women? Woman. So this is a probability of man equal to probability of the woman. Okay, because this is one side, so what is that? It's 1.64, right? Okay, so this is 1.64. And uh, now the next thing here is outlier is a point more than, so what is the outlier def definition? Is the 1.5 uh, IQR from the either end of the box. So when 
for the three, three IQRs here, if outside the three IQR, then we say this one is a series. We say this is a series outline and the 1.5 just regular, you know, the potential outlines here. Okay, number 20. If four points are added to each test score, what will happen to the range, variances, and the standard deviation? Okay, if they add four points, range is the largest one minus the smallest one, right? So this is not going to change. Variance is not going to change. Standard division not going to change. So layer. Okay. So the so the answer will be the range variance standard deviation will not change, right? Because if you add a four to every number, so the variance, so this variance is really just variations, right? So the variation is the same. So that's not going to change. Okay, consider the following box plot. Which of the following statements are true? Okay, so let's say the distribution is skewed to the right. Well, this one is sounds uh, yes. Right, so it's skewed to the right because I have a long tail. The interquartile range is about 20. Well, it's from the maybe 11 to two. So the interquartile box is here from here, right? So it's equal to 20, no. The median, yeah, about a six, yeah, that is true. And the value 18 is an outlier. No, it's not an outlier, right? Because it's in part of the distributions here none of the above, so the answer will be A and D. So if you have some point like way out here, then that is the outline here, right? Okay, so the answer for here will be what? Will be A and D. Okay, now let's take a look at number 23. A set of test scores have a simple standard deviation 10. If four points are added to each test score, what will be the value of your new test score standard deviation and uh, uh, variances here? Okay, a set of test score has standard deviation. We know if you add something number there, it will not change the variance and standard deviation, right? Okay, so what will be the, um, see here, the sample and the standard deviation 10, and the simple standard deviation 10, that's right, because the simple standard deviation 10 and the simple variance is just that you square the simple deviation. So here is a B, it's not going to change here. Okay, so the number 23, what is the five number summary? Is mean Q1, Q3, and the max, all right? So you need to remember is mean Q1, Q3, and, and the median and the max here. Okay, so this statistic classified all took the same test. Histogram and the box plot of the score for each class are showing here. All right, so the which box plot match number one? Okay, so box plot match number one here. All right, so this is a kind of uh, um, so this is kind of symmetric, right? And the symmetric have tight variances. So most likely I'm going to have one. So it's the A, see here. And uh, so the number three is here, this is left skewed. So this got a left skewed. And this one's here, you know, you have a, you know, bimodal here, right? So it's kind of, you know, kind of the same. So, a little bit of more variation. So they have more variations there. All right, number 25, the mean household income of a country in a recent year was found 75 to 63, and the standard deviation was 6,400. If a household income satisfied the normal distribution, what would be the household called the income at the top 1%? Okay, so this is the same. Right, so this is the average is seven five two six three, and uh, the standard deviation is is a six. Uh, the standard deviation is a six four hundred. 
the median is the so household satisfied model will be the top 1%. Top 1%, this is 0.01. Okay, now let's take a look at our calculator. All right, so let's see, we know how to input or not. So, okay, so let's clear that. Then we do a second VASAR, second VARS, right? Then we say this one's here. What do we do here? What would be the largest one? Is the normal CDF, correct? All right, so the normal CDF, oh no, I'm sorry, we should have used uh, we should have used the stat test. No, let me see. Okay, so you want to find uh, the top 1%. Okay, so we need to do inverse. We talk about is inverse norm. Okay, so the area, remember the inverse norm, area is always a what to the left. So this is 0 0.99, and what is the mean? 75263, 7526. And the sigma here is 64,000. Okay, so we have 157282. Okay, seems like we don't have, uh, you know, we don't have uh, the answers here. So let me double check to see the household income and the standard deviation is about 64,000. If a household income, then what it be, what would be the income of the top 10%, All right? So second, Distribution, let's take a look. So this will be the inverse norm. And the area, oh, 0 0.09, ha, 0 0.99. All right, now that's why, 0 0.99. Ha, I got a 224149. Yes, we do have the answer, 224149, okay. All right, so it's a two, two, four, one, four, nine. So it's this answer here. Okay, so now the next ones here are set of the uh, five thousand score on our college readiness exam, allowing to be approximately normal distributed with the mean seventy two and the standard deviation is five. Approximately how many scores are between sixty seven and the seventy seven? All right, so let's take a look here. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, oh, hold on. Okay, so the first thing is here, right? So the they have a 5,000 scores here. I want to test what is the probability will between 67 and the 77, right? So I will do second VARS, so that you will do the normal 75. So the lower boundary is 67, and then this one is 77, right? So for this problem, what is your uh, means here? Mean is 72. And uh, what is the sigma here? Sigma is a five. And paste, paste. So you are going to have a probability 0.682689, okay? So your probabilities here will be 0.68629, all right? So, now let's try to times 5,000 because they want us to find how many in between, right? So times 5,000. So we have uh, about uh, how many? We have about a three, I think it should be 5,000. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, 
Oh, I shouldn't do that. Okay, so let's do this. So pointer, okay, so pointer 6a, pointer 6a, two six a nine four eight five times five thousand times uh, oops what's going on And uh, you do a star times okay so where is my star times okay so let's uh, let's uh, clear that uh, clear second line and quit okay clear okay let's start over so second bars and uh, we have a cdf all right, CDF 67, okay, it's already there, 67, 77. All right, it's good. Let's see here. So it will be 68. So now you use the answer. So here's answer times uh, what? Times 5,000, right? Okay, so it's a pretty close to the three, four, one, three, right? Three, four, one, three. Three, four, one, three. So let's see where is the closest one here. Okay, so for this one here, the, we use the normal CDF to find out what is the probability between the 67 and the 77. So we find out it's about 0.68. Uh, two seven, and uh, so you want to see how many. So in here we have a five thousands, right? So your five thousand times point six eight two nine seven, you will get two four one three dot four four seven. So let's take a look at four three four dot three, right? So let's see here, three four dot three to the Okay, I'm sorry here, that's not the one I want, I'm sorry here. All right, so skate, all right. Screen share is part I have to show you later. Okay, so let's now, let's take a look at my exam reviews here. All right, so the, So that's why it's a 0.68242829. Then you times the 5,000. So you'll be very close to what is the value? You will be very close to 3413. So it's about 3413. So which answer is the closest one? Probably is here, right? Okay. Now, a panel for risk condition for the carbon hydronol. Carbohydrate syndrome can be treated with a surgery or investive risk split. Researchers believe that a surgery would be provide a better improvement rate with the with risk split. In the sample in the September 2012, Time magazine reported a survey of 106 patients among half of them under the surgery, 74 of them going to the uh, after the three months, but only 60% others who use the first splint improvement that the 1% level for the carbon hydrogen, carbon terminal hydrogen hypothesis test, what is the p-value? We're looking for the p-values, right? Okay, so now let's take a look here. So we said always a survey and that's invasive here. Research believe that a student should prove her improvement. In seven the Time Magazine report, a study 179 students among half of them had energy, 76 and half of them has 
NG60. Of those two used the first split improvement, test at one, you know, like 1% significance level. Okay, let's take a look here. All right, let's get my kind of calculator. Okay, so for this ones here, they said uh, this is the two side uh, test, right? So I was, so let's try to see here. I will do stat, then you go da da da, da da test, right? So this is what type of the test? This is a two-side proportion test, so it's number six. So it's a proportion test, Z test. All right, so they have like a few inputs. So let's see, we can find the input. 70 pesos and show the improvement after, only show who use the risk splint improved, but a 60% show. And uh, to test at the one person level for the capital capital terminal syndrome hypothesis to test what is the p value. Okay, let's see here p value for the so. Okay, so the first numbers here we're going to do uh, number of time management only study hundred sixty point. Among the half, that was holding 74%. Without it, only 60%. Those who used the risk split improve the test at a 1%. Test at a 1% level significance for the carbon hydrate symptom is for the carbon hydrate season is with the p value. What is the p value for the test? Okay. So this one's here, this is will be um, 176 and done you divided by half. So the, so I see 74% struggle improve, 60% of struggle we use to the, but the only test at the one level for the carbon turnoff syndrome hypothesis testing. Okay, All right, so that's why we want to test. Uh, so this one, the 2,176, so it's 80, 88, right? Okay, so it's 88. So what is the, what is this 88? I have 74%, right? 88, I have a 74%. That means uh, ATA, um, let me get my calculator. So it's uh, ATA times uh, point, uh, um, uh, ATA, all right, so here, 77.44. Okay, so we have a 77.44 and seventy-seven point four four. Okay, so okay, so here will be seventy-seven because we cannot have a, the decimal. So this one will be 88. And the X2 is 70. X2, how many of it? Going to two, point 60. Okay, so the 88 times point 6 will be 53. So this number will be 53. And the N2 is 88. And uh, I want to see is the, uh, who used the risk assessment, right? So to use the risk assessment is here. 
Now we go to the calculation. Oops, uh, something wrong with that. All right, so let's see here. So 176 is 86. So let's do a stat. Okay, so that's not right. So it's a stat. All right, we do test. We do two proportion Z test. Okay, so it's a 77. Oh, okay, so you cannot have a you cannot have uh, uh, decimal point. All right, so I made a silly mistake there. So we got what they are looking for p value. The p value is 1.917390. Okay, so let's back here. Okay, so the, we know the, okay, so let's uh, make sure here the slide show, the slide show. All right, so this is the, Okay, so now let's go to the our worksheets here. All right, so the, we said the p-value, oh, okay, p-value. Now you read it that p-value is 1.9174, okay? So, One point, okay. So you will get this one here is one point and one point, one point nine eight seven four something. Then they have the e the negative five at the end. So when you see the when you see the e, that means that you move the decimal point to how many places? It's four places. So you have 1.9874. Now I'm going to move the decimal point from, you know, the one, two, three, four, five. That's right. So it will be pointers. Okay, so no, that's not what I mean. It will be 0.9874. So you move the decimal point of four places. So it's one, two, three, four, five, right? So now you can fill in the zeros here. So this will be, so the real answer would be 0.001, 200, uh, 19874. So which one it is? 0. 0.0001. So that means it will be east, right? Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at number 28. Survey the 430 uh, random choices. Okay, so the now let's uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and continue the next province here. Okay, so the let me try to find the. Okay, so for the next province here, it's a survey of 430 randomly chosen, uh, randomly chosen. Uh, uh, adult find 21% of 222 men, 18% of the 208 would have purchased books online. Is there evidence that men are much likely to purchase is online here? All right, so let's start here. Let's start, let's go back to the, 
Okay, so the first thing is here, you need to calculate how much, how like the, what is the, uh, what is the number? So you say 0 0.21 times 430. So you will get a 90.3. And then uh, 222 times 0.8, oh, times 0.18. All right, so we'll get uh, 0.18. So then 21 of the 430 women students found the lab, 21 of the 244 men. And uh, Okay, so 21. Okay, so this is not the kind of confused. Okay, so this is the 222 cement. So 222 times 0.21. Okay. 222, 222 times 0.21. So it's about a 47. And uh, then the 18 of a 208, so it's a 208 times 0.18. And uh, what do we have here? We have 37.44, 37.44. So I take, the, I take the whole integers here. Okay, I want to test the 5% significance. So let's go back to our calculator. Here, okay. All right, this is the, so what type of test this is? This is, uh, you know, the this is like uh, the two proportions, right? So you do stat, then you go to test. This is a two proportion Z test, right? So the X is one is what, 471, and uh, what is the N222? X2 is what? 37. And uh, enter the 208. And uh, you want to see man is morning. Right? So you choose the, this one greater than equal to P2. That's correct. And then I do a calculation. Okay, so the P value is a pointer. One a uh, one a a three. So because of the p value, so let's uh, okay. I right, saw so that because of the p value is a point one a three three is greater than point oh five. So what do we say here? Fail to reject, right? So fail to reject. So it's a does. Data does not provide significant evidence to support a claim that the mean value that meant much more like the uh, by the book online at 5% interval here, 5% confidence here. So this is right. And uh, now let's take a look at part B, why it's not right. Let's say data does not provide significance support the claim that men much more likely to buy book online at the 20% level, okay? So the now let's see here, this is not the 20% level, all right? So the because, the, because your p-value is 0.1833, right? So if you use, uh, if you use 20% as the significance level, then the p-value going to be what? Going to sit in the rejection region, right? So does reject H0, that means provide uh, support, you know, to support the claim men, you know, about a more online book than a woman. All right, so the, because this is what they mean, all right? So let's say if it's a 20, so if this is a 20, and uh, now your, you know, the, your p-value is only 0.1833, okay? Now, number 29 is here. Let's take a look at other ones here, just make sure we do understand that. They said the data provides significant level evidence to support a claim 
men much likely buy. So no, this is not, we don't support that claim because P value is big. Data provide a significant evidence to support a claim that men much more likely to buy the online book than women at a 10% level. No, 10%, 10%, the point one is greater than that. So we still, you know, fail to reject. Data provide a significant evidence to support a claim that the men much likely to buy the online book and the woman, both in the five and the 10. No, because both of them you will reject the non hypothesis. Okay, number 29. In 2019, New Jersey Adult Tobacco Survey find 22.5% of the 464 uh, men say that they smoke a cigarette while only 18.3 percent of the 18.3 percent of the 2449 black and uh, people respond so now we want to do this survey indicate a differences right so this is the differences all right so the first thing is let's uh, calculate the x so 22.5, so this is 436 times the 22.5. So this one will be close to 104. Then, okay, so for 2449, 2449 times 183. So this will be 400, this will be 448. Okay, now let's try to use our calculators here. Let me go to my calculator. And here's my calculator here. All right, so the um, clear this out. I'm still do the stat and do a testing. Now this is a two proportion Z test, right? Okay, so what is the X1? X1 is uh, 104, right? So X1 is uh, 104. And the, what is the sample size? 464. And the X2 is 44A. Four, four and the, oh, 464. And the X2 is equal to the 448. And uh, N is equal to what? 2449. 2449. Nine, then you are doing not equal, right? They want to see there's any differences. So let's see. So the so the, the answer is 2.076. Okay, so it's 2.076. So this one is a two point after the calculate 2.076. So that's why it's very close to the 2.08. Okay. Let's take a look at the last ones here. The last one is tell you is there a relationship between the Facebook user and the age among the student. The following bar graph summarizes survey data. What of the following statement is true? Okay, this is what we talk about. This is the segment segmented bar chart, right? Segmented bar chart. So they show the percentage, they all equal to the 100. Mm. That's why I call the segmented bar chart. So we do know when the younger people is a Facebook user is a lot. Now for the middle age, they drop for the older one, 28 and up. Like, so it seems you know, the Facebook user depends on the age, right? Okay, so what do they say here? They said, we surveyed the same number of the students in each age group. No, we don't have to be the same because he's 100%. We survey more students of the young age, 18 to 22 group than the middle age. No, we don't know that because the, we just know the percentage wise. Okay, so now, like a younger age group has more Facebook user than the middle age group. Ha, huh, you see, probably you will say, oh yeah, it's this one. 
All right, so you said, yeah, probably it's this one because it seems like a younger group has more, but be careful, this more, this is what? Those are the percentages, right? So this is the percentage. The percent is high, but the actual numbers, right, might not be high, right? So this one is done. Then these here, age, uh, Age group 20 and up has the smallest percent of the Facebook user and other group. So this is a correct. You see here it has the smallest percent, right? So it's not a say oh, I check less people. You can check a different sample size and then you have reached that to the 100%. Okay, that's it. Uh, and uh, there are some very good problems here. So I help you to clear uh, what you learned. All right, and uh, nice talk to you and uh, study hard and uh, get a good grade. Okay, bye-bye.